So in preparation for the rear QA1 suspension install, I'm going to go ahead and start pulling out the rear end. Uh, you're going to end up taking the leafs, the leaf hangers, everything off. So you can take the rear end out with just the U-bolt or you can go ahead and take the bolt out of the spring perch. Uh, then you got your two shock bolts, brake lines, and that should be it. It's a pretty quick process. I'm also probably going to take my box off. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, not needed for the QA1 stuff. I just want to clean my frame, paint it, since the truck's this far apart, I figured might as well. So we'll go ahead and do that quick. So I know everything happens fast on YouTube, and it looks, you know, oh, like everything goes perfect. That is not the case. This truck is pretty rust-free, pretty solid, and even so, pretty much all these bolts are, are stuck. So on the suspension side, got the nuts off, but the bolt is stuck in the hanger. So I'm letting that soak with some WD, and then if that don't break loose, I guess I'll heat it up. Uh, back ones I actually got out already, so we're 50% there. Um, well, this one's still in, but I got the other side out. On the box side of things, I think the nuts came off of two of the bed bolts. Um, three of them I can't even break loose with my two-foot breaker bar, which I probably could if I tried a little harder, but uh, I don't want to spin them in the bed. This one spun in the bed, so I got that, cut that one off. And I'll probably end up cutting a few more off. Obviously, I nicked the bed a little bit, but it is rhino line, and I'm probably going to reline it, so or touch up, you know, those spots I messed up. So anyways, I don't know, hour and a half of cutting, grinding, and beating on things. So, yeah, just goes to show that it's not always as easy as it looks on the computer. Okay, this is my third attempt to remove the box. I tried lifting it off, but two people just wasn't quite enough. Well, two bigger people could probably do it, but so now I've got some chains rigged up with the engine hoist. I had just one chain and it actually twisted the box quite a bit, so I was just being lazy. Now I got both on here. Hopefully this does it. Don't worry about those bolts I'm using as pins. I think she's up.
this is the QA1 bolt-in four link for 73 to 79 F100s. Um, F-150s, I guess, technically. So I'm going to be go ahead and install this in my truck. Uh, these are all the boxes. I think one of these boxes is actually my front coilovers, but QA1 is a U.S. company, mostly made in Minnesota, which is pretty cool. Uh, you don't have to take the box off to do this. I just want to get the frame all cleaned up and painted. And then since the truck is coming this far apart, I figured why not. First thing I need to do is go through these boxes and see if I can find some instructions. But uh, then we'll get right into it. I believe you're going to be taking off the shackle mounts, front and rear. Obviously, the rear end, the springs, all that's coming out of it. I actually have a Dana 44 in my truck because it is the F100 instead of the F150. Uh, some had Dana 44s and some had 9 inches from what I understand. So we're going to um, be swapping over to a 9 inch. You need to run a 9-inch to run the QA1 setup because of how their watts link mounts. Um, and just 9 inches uh, easier. Rear end to work on, in my opinion, easier to swap gears. So I do have a 9-inch sitting here for it. I'll get that set up uh, maybe in a different video because I got wheel wood discs and quick axles and stuff to go in it. So, But uh, yeah, enough of that. I'll quit talking and get to it. So as I'm cutting open this stuff, I just want to... Kind of give a shout out to QA1 and say a few things. First of all, this isn't sponsored. I paid full price for all this stuff. I actually ordered it about a year ago, right after um, it was first released. I have talked to QA1 a few different times um, at different events. Uh, great company, great people to, to talk to and deal with. Um, good tech support. And if you're ever, you know, if you're in Minnesota in the Twin Cities area or if you get this way, they've got a couple open houses that they do every year. If you, if you have the time and you're able to make it, go check it out, tour the facility. Uh, pretty cool what they're doing. Not only do they do suspension stuff, they also do um, drive shafts and just, just a big variety of stuff. Um, and pretty cool to, to go check out their facility. As far as the product goes, um, we'll see how the, the fitment is, but packaging is super, super well done. Thick cardboard staples and then all wrapped up so nothing's getting banged up or beat up in shipping and then there's your documents right there so that's pretty cool um, we'll kind of keep going but just wanted to give a shout out to them i mean that's that's what you expect when you pay you know <clears throat> what i would consider definitely full price but uh you know at least you get what you pay for i guess in that document packet or envelope area is your instructions and your cardboard template. Your cardboard template is going to be used to make your C-notch. It'll go on these two bolts right there, but getting ahead of myself, don't lose that. Uh, pretty pretty nice instructions. They're also available online, but several pages. Uh, I don't know, 14 pages. Nice pictures and diagrams. So at first glance, they look pretty good. We're going to push this stuff out of the way and start taking the leaves out of this thing okay so after reading through the instructions it looks like we're going to cut off this front shackle mount right here so those four rivets will get cut off the three rivets behind it for the cross member stay there's three more rivets back here holding on the upper shock mount that's going to come off the bump stop's going to come off and then it says on short box trucks you do not have to remove this rear hanger but I think I'm going to take it off anyways, just because it's a little extra weight I can get rid of, and it'll clean up the frame rail. Once you have those pieces taken off, then you're going to cut this whole, you can see where the frame's bent down all the way up to the front side of the shock mount. You're going to cut that whole lip off of there. That will allow the QA1 subframe piece to sit flush. Then you're going to align your cardboard template in these two holes and cut in your C-notch. Once all of that's done, you can put the QA1 subframe up into place and start drilling the mounting holes for that. And then move on to your axle side of things. So pretty straightforward. Instructions seem pretty thorough. So uh, we'll start cutting this up. Hopefully I don't run out of grinder distance. I'm pretty low after doing the crown brick stuff.
Okay, so here we have it, one parted out F100. It uh, wasn't terrible. These rivets seem to cut easier than the, than the rivets in the front, so I don't know. That's cool. So you got four, three more, and then four more, so what's that, eight, 11 per side? So there's some cutting and grinding to do. And I did take off the rear shackle mounts. You can see she's, she's messy. But honestly, I think I'm most excited just to get this thing all cleaned up, get rid of all this rust and grime. Uh, I'm gonna run new brake lines, new fuel line. I haven't decided about a wiring harness. I don't know if I'm gonna just clean up and run the stock one, but got these rivets to punch out still. So what I ended up doing is taking an angle grinder, cutting the heads off the rivets, and then using a, uh, an air hammer. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight one. Uh, but to get in behind the brackets and pop the brackets off the frame. Some of the rivets pulled out, some of them are still in here. Um, worst case scenario, I'll have to grind these flush and then try to pound them out. They're pretty, they're pretty stuck. They're not, uh, they don't give it up easy, but anyways, pretty stoked about this. So we're gonna go ahead, by we, I mean me, go ahead and get this all swept up, cleaned up, uh, just kind of organize the shop because it's a bit of a mess right now. I got truck pieces everywhere. And then uh, pull those bump stops off still. Get the rest of the bolts from the box. I got a few remnants to clean up. And then, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll keep going tonight or call her good once I get cleaned up. But yeah, it's coming along. So I guess I was a little prematurely excited because it took me another 25 minutes to bust out those rivets that were already you know cut off I ended up grinding all of them basically flush and then using the air hammer on the inside or air chisel on the inside I mean look at this thing is just demolished and it wouldn't come out so fun fun not hard just kind of frustrating anyways the next step according to the instructions is going to be removing these bump stops here on both sides and then if you look on the inside of the frame rail, you can see this portion of the rail curls down. So you're gonna go ahead and cut all that off. So starting back behind the bump stop, coming all the way up to this point here. Uh, what you're doing is you're cutting off that lip right there. That will allow the, the QA1 setup to sit up flat against the frame rail. If you look at their instructions, they do a pretty good job of illustrating this. And once that's done, we'll move on to notching with the cardboard template for the actual uh, C-notch portion. I did go to Harbor Freight this morning, pick up some new uh, cutoff wheels and discs. Uh, also got some ear protection and then, you know, not a good idea to wear a hoodie. Provided by QA1. Two bolt holes in the frame right here. And then it's already kind of pre creased. So that'll help you get it in the right spot. I picked up this welding pencil in town today. Looks pretty nice. I don't do a lot of metal work, so kind of learning as I go here what works. What works good, but this. Seems to write pretty good, a lot finer than just a straight grease uh, grease pencil or something else. So. 